Wee! How sweet and innocent. This painting seems reminiscent of the good old days when we reveled in the innocence of childhood and had no care in the world. A woman enjoys herself on a swing. This is what I call a great painting, but wait a minute. Why is this sleazy man looking up her skirt? And who is this weird man that is pushing her? Maybe it's not so sweet after all. Before we dive in, if you enjoy our content, don't forget to like and subscribe. The Rococo period coincides with the end of Baroque and is known for its exuberant, lush, ornamental, and even ostentatious characteristics. The Western European art movement is often remembered for its arrogance and playfulness. Whereas the Baroque had grandiose ambitions, Rococo was more interested in love, frivolity, and sensuality. It started in France, where the pursuit of happiness and joy came to be seen as the epitome of a well-lived life. While the Western nobility thought it was spiritually redemptive, the lower classes considered it self-indulgent. The Swing by Jean-Honoré Fragonard is the most famous Rococo-style painting, and one can easily see why Rococo has such a controversial reputation. In fact, the man who commissioned it knew that it would prove controversial, which is why he wanted to display it in his private display room, also known as cabinets. Why would someone want to keep a seemingly innocent piece in the dark and enjoy it in the leisure of one's privacy? A cursory glance offers a very pleasing impression. Lush gardens of mythical proportions surround us. A woman enjoys a cloudy evening and a man poses below her as if pining for her love. Seems pretty harmless. But as the cupid on the left side of the frame indicates, the commissioner wanted no one to know about it. A proper record of ownership starts with Mary Francois Menage de Pressigny, a tax farmer who was later guillotined. It's unknown who commissioned the original painting, but at one point historians believed it might have been this man, Baron de Saint-Julien. The commission was first offered to Gabriel Francois Doyen, a religious man who painted mythical and historical scenes. The artist refused to paint the piece, since he considered it too risqué. A few bucks to tarnish my good repute, no thank you. And might you want to know why it was considered so raunchy? Because the woman's ankle is showing. I kid you not. Jean-Honoré Fragonard had painted for the royalty, but the French royals were going through a rough period and had failed to pay the artist for his services. The aristocracy had run rampant. They were commissioning artworks of the most indulgent sort the swing being a prime example. So Fragonard accepted it in hopes of finally earning some money. The man in the bottom left corner is probably the man who commissioned the painting. The woman up front who meets his gaze is his mistress, and the man on the right side of the frame is her husband. Given what we know about the Rococo period and the hedonism of the French ruling class at the time, it should come as no surprise that the woman is the object of desire. Look how her pink dress and skin tone separate her from the rest of the bluish frame. The man looks up at her, intrigued by her presence and reaching out for her. The man on the right seems desperate, holding on to her by any and all means necessary. It reminds me of a John Berger quote. A man's presence suggests what he is capable of doing to you or for you. By contrast, a woman's presence defines what can and cannot be done to her. Placing the woman on a swing is a masterstroke. A swing moves back and forth, which symbolizes her dwindling fidelity. Now part of a holy matrimony, now having an affair on the side. The ornate clothes and the lush greenery around her exalt and mythologize her beauty. The motion unveils her stockings, underlining the erotic intent. Since she isn't Tarzan, she shouldn't enjoy hanging out in the forest. It's pretty ludicrous, but the idealized manner in which she is painted makes it instantly clear that we have to forego reality for something more fantastic. She is placed there for the sake of two men. Her pink dress and the red velvet of her seat make that instantly clear. It screams decadence. All right, maybe not scream, but it does whisper decadence. I mean, look at the man's expression. It's as if the vision of the woman's legs and <coughs> something more has made him fall backward. He is not making a goofy face. He is a pervert. And that's the man who commissioned it. Not to mention he's looking right up the woman's skirt. The composition perfectly captures the scene's narrative. Blooming flowers surround the lover on the left, and the light from above illuminates him. The husband on the right resides in a dilapidated part of the woods, consumed by weeds and darkness. 
He tugs on the ropes, trying to control his wife to no avail. You can even notice the fragile state of their marriage simply by looking at the withering top ropes. The swing is barely hanging on. Since the swing is in its rightmost extended position, if the frayed rope were to break, the woman would fall into her lover's arms. Let's leave the main characters and look around the frame for other clues. The woman's extended foot and her flung shoe guide our eye to the statue on the left. This statue represents Cupid, the god of desire and eroticism in Greek mythology. He motions her to keep quiet, for her husband seems on edge and weary as it is. On the right side of the frame, this impulse is countered by the presence of a dog that barks at the woman. Dogs in Western art have come to represent loyalty and fidelity. The dog's barking is a call to refrain from extramarital affairs and resume her companionship with her husband. There are also a couple of children on the right. The wings on these children liken them to angels, maybe even unborn children from wedlock. One looks at the woman with shock and disgust, while the other shies away, refusing to witness the fling. All these elements harmonize the composition, creating a precise balance on the right and the left. The swing is bound on the right side, the husband's side. The children and the dog standing in for the sanctity of marriage are also positioned on the right. This part of the frame is engulfed in shadows, bereft of the gift of light. The left side is enchanting and beguiling, with the light shining perfectly onto the attractive lover, laid out beside blooming flowers and an inviting Cupid statue. The charm becomes irresistible. The woman moves on the swing between these contrasting sides, unable to reach a decision. In the 70s, John Berger floated the revolutionary idea that the medium of oil painting was largely tied up with the concept of possessions. Nobles commissioned paintings of the things they wished to own. Women were not exempt from this phenomenon. Since men also wanted women, oil painting became a means to objectify women. The swing is a clear example of that attitude, further exacerbated by the decadent urges of the Rococo period. It might not seem particularly erotic to us, but since the painting was commissioned to be displayed in a private setting, it can rightfully be considered an 18th century kink. On the other hand, some might argue that the painting is quite playful and should not be approached from a moral high ground, but that is exactly what Western philosophers revolted against. The Enlightenment that arrived soon thereafter called for a more serious art that behaved responsibly toward its subjects and its audiences. They argued that art should show the nobility of man, not depict his wet dreams. On the other hand, figures like Fragonard and Marquis de Sade kept crossing boundaries to the annoyance of others. Fragonard kept painting privately commissioned pieces and engaged in more titillating and crude work over the years. However, the swing remains his most famous piece, maybe due to the mystery of its original commissioner. If you liked our content, don't forget to like and subscribe. If there are any subjects you'd like us to cover, let us know in the comments. And do tell us what you think of Rococo art. Is it vulgar or do some tasteless pieces give the movement a bad name? We'll see you in the next one.